Good morning, everyone. So today I have a haul, um, some things I picked up at Michael's and I think Barnes and Noble. I think that's it. I don't think I've received anything in the mail, but how would I know? Cause my mail <laughs> box is not uh, in use right now. And I've talked about that in other videos, but yeah. So something happened to the mailbox. It was like compromised. I don't know when this happened. Cause like I hardly ever go out in front and it's a big old community box that has like little cubbies, you know? And, um, I know I grabbed the mail not too long ago because I was expecting something and oh it was like an HSN thing and they said it was delivered and I'm like ah, and that was like weeks ago. So I guess something happened in between there that they stopped delivering the mail here at my house but like they didn't leave a note from like you would think the post office would leave something on your door like hey come get your mail at the post office. No. I just heard from one of my neighbors, you know, so I'm like, okay. And they had tons of my mail. So part of it was like spellbinders, you know, review items that I was expecting that I had no idea. And then sometimes they bring a box or two, sometimes they don't. It's weird. So I have to go check again actually um, soon. So I might have something else delivered. Hopefully nothing's missing. That's the only problem. I'm like, I don't think so. Cause I really haven't been ordering too much, especially with all the home repairs and things that have been going on. Like I just have been kind of outside that loop for a little while, but Anyway, um, the things I'll show you here, if you know anything's available, I'll link in the description box. Those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links. I say that because I don't know, maybe something will be on Craft Stash or Amazon or something else, but generally it's stuff from, again, Michaels and Barnes and Noble. Oh, and then, um, yeah, no, I guess that's it. So we'll get started with that. And I just want to check in with you guys because um, I'm going to have some more family visiting on Wednesday. We're going to the Marine Corps Ball on Thursday. So that's usually an overnighter kind of thing because it's not usually in the same area from where you are that you like to do to like destination Marine Corps Balls. So this will be the first one since I think COVID that I'll be going to. So it's been a while, but I'm taking uh, my brother and sister-in-law with us so they can check it out and see what that's like. And Matt is speaking at the Marine Corps Ball that he's uh, going to be going to. So, or that we're going to. So, um, a lot going on with that. So right now I'm just trying to get videos ready so I can have company and be gone and all those things, right? Uh, you know, tomorrow's uh, Halloween, gotta get ready for the kids. Um, I also signed up to do uh, like a trunk or treat at Dorian's uh, high school. So that'll be fun with the band kids with marching band, just to hand out little things. So I have tons of goodie bags I was gonna be putting together for them. There's 160 kids. so. I have work cut out for me. I think we're going to do assembly style. Just put everything out and then I'm all of us, <laughs> Miranda, Dorian, you know, my mom's visiting here, my husband, everybody, we're going to go around and just get them filled. And, um, I have some fun candies too, that I was going to, um, put together like some Mexican candies, just like gummy candy that you put like chila kind of chamoy sauce on them. And it's fun. And the kids like that kind of thing. So hopefully that'll be okay. Uh, I might make a video on it, but, uh, there's nothing, to write home about. It's just gummy candies and you add chamoy, maybe some powdered sugar. Well, and then like chile, like tahine and like chile and just put it on the gummy candies and it tastes good. It just makes them spicy, you know? Um, and then you put them in like a cute little serving cup so that, you know, they can be closed up and all that. So anyway, um, what else was I going to say? Yeah. So it's going to be a busy few days. So if you don't hear from me like tomorrow, which hopefully I'll have something, it's because I'm basically just making videos to have to show you guys later, right? Um, and then of course the Spellbinders Club Kits on the first. I put my video to launch at midnight going into the first, which is midnight of like going from Halloween to the first. So keep an eye out for that. Um, some really, really nice uh, Club Kits. So let's see what we have here. Um, I put this in the Michael's bag. This is from Barnes and Noble, but uh, so Barnes and Noble. But we have the um, Your Crochet and Knitting magazine. I don't know that's that's what. Yeah, I guess that's what it's called. I just thought this was so cute because it came with the yarns, cute yarns. There are some uh, knitting needles, but there's also the little crochet hook that supposedly you're going to use uh, to make these guys. So any of these little characters that you see out here basically can be made with the yarn that's included. And I thought that was really cute because you have options, right? You can see it's all the same color palette. Adorable, cute, and so I love stuff like this. So grab that guy. And then it's so hard for me to turn down a, or to look at the magazines to only pick a few. I love craft magazines. That's why I said I'll link them on craft stash. Cause they're a better price on craft stash. I mean, hands down, like they'll be $5 or whatever when they're 20 bucks at, you know, Barnes and Noble. But, uh, this one, I really liked the way it came with the crafters companion, um, die set. 
stamping die so you can do the stamping and then you have this die that cuts this area away so you can make it a shaker or whatever it is and I thought that was really really cool it has some sentiments and it has the word believe so I will make a tutorial using this because I like to do that too whenever I get like craft stash um, or any of these like, kind of crafty uh, magazines I like to make a tutorial for you guys to show you how you might want to use these because a lot of times I know I buy them because I like the stuff and then I don't use the stuff so uh, I like to show you guys a little something on that. I think that's, I have more things from Barnes Noble that was in this Michael's bag. Um, at Michael's the other day, actually, I should have grabbed them. I picked up um, some little pumpkins that look like this, but they're snow, um, snow bombs, or <laughs> hot cocoa bombs, but you can, it's a little pumpkin face. They had a ghost shape that was much bigger, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to take more stuff, and you know, um, so I like the size of the little pumpkin, but uh, this is the new ones. They already have their Christmas stuff out, of course, like every other store, and so I did grab two of these. Um, this is a three-part mold but basically you do your melts you put it in there I think I made a video on it I use candy melts and they do work candy melts are not gonna melt as quickly because I mean they're more oily kind of a substance I mean they are supposedly chocolate but come on um, you can definitely use actual melting chocolate like good stuff or your guitar or whatever it is that you like to use but Wilton candy melts and those kind of candy melts like every brand has now Almost every store has their own brand, right? Um, they will work. It just takes a little bit uh, hotter milk and a little more time to really melt down, but it works great. So um, I grabbed two so we can do two at a time. Um, actually, I think these do two at a time. Let me see. No, it makes one basically because you need the top and the bottom. Hello. Um, I want to see why it says three parts. Oh, because it has that little silicone piece. That's right. They're really, uh, these molds are done really well because um, you have other candy like molds where it's just a thing you pour the chocolate not hard candy because it'll melt this but uh, your chocolate or whatever melting wafers you're using and you kind of have to pop it out and it, it'll release but this comes with like a little piece it's not silicone it's just like a little plasticky piece that lays in there so when you bring it out you can take that whole plastic piece out and just kind of it's a softer plastic right so you can pull it away hopefully you can kind of see that there so it's uh, really well done they have all kinds of cute shapes of course but I just picked those guys oh I grabbed these not so much for candy making but I want to try my hand at doing some of those little projects that people do where you buy like the cheap you know candles at um, Dollar Tree and like a mug or something and then you melt down the wax and you pour it in there and you make your own candle and then you can top it with like cute things and you can even use that wax to do these guys um, so uh, I grabbed these little uh, snowmen and then I grabbed the little gingerbread man how cute are these I probably should have got another one of these because once you put wax in there especially like a scented wax maybe you don't want to put food in there anymore so hopefully they still have those I'll grab another one for food purposes <laughs> I only got this one little cookie cutter because I just thought it was so cute. Um, this is why I don't go to the store because I end up with all kinds of random things. Uh, oh, I actually have more Michael stuff. That's right. Okay, I'll have to grab that. The, I went to grab goodie bag type things for my son who was doing like a secret Santa exchange, but it was spooky baskets and it's like a Halloween thing. And I all this stuff is like gone everywhere right because <laughs> we're so close to Halloween it's just like impossible to find but they had everything 70% off and I had like other coupons or awards whatever and so I do have some Halloween items I'll show you in just a minute but look how cute this little gingerbread house is I would make it from a sugar cookie but very cute and then they also had some Loran items that I didn't realize that Michaels was carrying and the big bottles so I man I just haven't been paying attention so this is a cherry bakery emulsion now that's something a little bit different for flavoring it's not the same as well this is a bakery emulsion they're all bakery emulsions what is going on hmm I'm gonna have to find a way to use these I think and I hope I can still use this in candy I don't know because emulsion is a little bit different than an extract but I'm sure it's fine it just says flavor that won't bake out I guess that's the only difference but that does mean it probably has something else in it I mean, there's lots of other things in it, right, than just uh, an extract, but I'll figure it out. And then some citric acid, um, because <laughs> I'm trying my hand at different things, and when you make, like, hard candy apples, you can mix a little bit of citric acid with some sugar and roll the apple in that, um, and it gives it, like, a, like a sour patch kit or, like, a you know warhead like those candies um that kind of flavor because it's citric acid right and you can use it for other things but this stuff you have to be real careful with it is very uh concentrated and then so those are the flavors i got pineapple cherry and the butter vanilla or yeah something like that 
Uh, let me put these things to the side. Let me grab the other Michaels things and then we'll go into the Barnes and Noble stuff. So this is the little set that I was telling you about. How cute are these? I guess I gotta work on these tonight. <laughs> so cute. So again, I grab them in pairs because it just makes it easier so you can do a few at a time. Now this one does have the ability to make two from one kit so you can make four at a time. Oh, well, since I have the two, right? Look at this little guy. How cute is he? Adorable. I mean... <laughs> For me, it's hard to decorate stuff like this. Like, you can then, you know, maybe that's buttercream. I don't know. But uh, I would just leave it like that. Make it a brownie or something. Maybe put some little fake eyeballs. That'd be cute or something. But uh, very cute. And then we have this guy. Look at this 3D silicone cake mold that makes the little pumpkin. Oh, my goodness. That'd be really cute if you have, like, a smaller recipe. You can just do the top. Leave like that. Do the top and the bottom. They just put like some kind of delicious frosting in there and then they just line that out. It's a cute um, idea, the accenting that they did. And honestly, I would do that with like Wilton candy melts because you can just melt a few in a Ziploc and just doo -doo -doo -doo, real quick and you have that decoration instead of trying to make buttercream and color it and all that. Um, yeah, not much stuff here. This one's on clearance. I'm not even sure what this is. It just says embellishments. I'm like, that's very cute. Oh, look, I didn't notice it has like little stickers that you can put on the bottles. That's adorable. Anyway, these are for in my craft room here for whatever I might want to use those for next year, basically. Um, oh, this thing was on clearance for like five bucks, basically. The Sweet Tooth Fairy uh, Melting Pot Cauldron, you guys. So basically, you're going to use this to melt down your candy melts. Maybe you can make caramel and just let it sit in there to stay warm. I don't know that it'll melt it for you. I don't know how high this, like, the heat gets on this. I wasn't even sure if it's electric. electric. I was like, what is this? Do you have to melt it and then hold it in there? It says melting pot cauldron with removable bowl insert holds seven grams or seven ounces, sorry, of meltables. Witch finger skewers. I guess it comes with little skewers. Oh, that's cute. It only has two of them. But, uh, yeah. It's basically for the the uh, meltables, right? But I was like, eh, I think you can probably put something else in there if you want to make it a little more fun dewy. Maybe, I don't know if the temperature will keep it warm enough. But how cute is that? I don't know if it's deep enough either to actually dip things like this. Because, you know, I love making those kind of things. I have my pretzels ready to go. I have my meltables. So, we'll see. Oh, those are the fingers. <laughs> how funny cute but yeah i was like oh yeah all day i'll take that so that was that i think that's it okay the other company that i have things from the other place i bought stuff was loran oils themselves so that's what i meant to show you because i was like i know there's something else let me oh one more thing, or a couple more things from uh, Michaels. These celebrated, look at this, metal reinforced silicone mini angel food cake pans. How cute is this? They're a good size, I think, for a mini, for angel food. Angel food, I mean, it just kind of disappears, right? Um, I think if it was any smaller than this, it'd be kind of disappointing. So these are really cute. I got two of them because, of course, with the full recipe, you probably, probably need two of them. Um, super cute. They have like this whole line of this kind of stuff. I don't know if it's new. Like I said, I try not to spend too much time at the stores. Um, but they have tons of these. And uh, one of them made like loaves, like little loaves, I guess. And, but it had holes all at the bottom. I'm like, what are you supposed to do with this? Unless you're supposed to put a insert, like a cupcake liner, but it was a loaf shape. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the holes... <laughs> it seems weird to me. I'm like, am I seeing something wrong? Maybe I'm not understanding, but uh, interesting stuff. Okay, real quick, at, um, let's finish this guy up. Again, another story I don't go too often because I'm like, oh, this is so cute when you walk in. Look at this. I know you like making sushi, so for me, I'll use this. I'm going to use the, you know, mat. The onigiri makers that are so cute in the different shapes, I had to get those because Miranda will love it. And she's like, how does it make onigiri? So I explained to her, but I guess in a way, the onigiri that we're thinking of, it has, it's wrapped in seaweed. Obviously, this would be much harder to do that with. You can make more of a rice ball, but you can still put something in it, like stuff your little um, mold here. And then it comes with a bento box, it says, which I don't know, not very big because this is only this high. So we'll see, but that is really cute. That's a cute um, gift idea, I think, too. And then along with that, in the front when you first walk in, they're like, buy these things. I'm like, okay, I will. Uh, creepy crochet, look at the little dog. Look at the cat. <laughs> I love that he looks all scruffy in his little expression. So hopefully if I make this, I can make him look just as cute. Um, so the different ideas in here, they have little ghosts with chains. Oh my gosh. I didn't even notice this guy until I left. I was like, oh, that is adorable. I mean, look, at, honestly, I thought it was going to be these three things possibly you can make. But look at all these different designs. Oh my gosh, the little skeleton. Look at the little zombie like bride or whatever she is. Oh my goodness, this is adorable.
Okay, well, I'm much happier with that than I was even to begin with. Okay. You guys, I like making dolls. I like making all kinds of things. I haven't made videos like that in a long time. I, I need to get back to that. Um, my old, the house I came from before I came to this house, I think it just was set up differently. My craft room that I did a lot of sewing and stuff, and here it's just, it's different. Even the way I had to film for, you know. So those are the kinds of things I need to think about when I start redoing this room, because this room is getting crazy. Like, I, I, yeah, it's too much. It's too much! And then I'm showing you all these new things I brought in. <laughs> Crafts for Christmas. Um, why did I get this one? There was something in this that I was like, oh yeah, I want it for that reason. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the uh, pattern for these little guys. Oh my gosh, how cute are they? I mean, I could not... Look at her little round face and his little face. Uh, these... Uh, I have no words. And then Tasty Recipes, it says, and I love anything brownie and minty. And since this is from, like, across the pond, I thought, we'll see what they recommend or how they do things. So I'll try that out. And it happens to come with this Christmas card making kit that's basically just papers. I mean, I don't know. It'll be okay. Uh, maybe we'll make a video on that, too, to make it more substantial. Amazing cupcakes and cookies? Yes, of course. Why not? <laughs> so I love things like this. Pecan Tassies. Ooh, snickerdoodle cookies. Um, I just like trying different recipes until I get to a recipe where I'm like, this is the one. This is what I like. So then I stick with that, you know? So I like to have things like that. Holiday cookies. Taste of home. I love these magazines. And every year I'm like, is this the same as last year's? Is this possibly different? Like, I don't know. I end up, I look at the recipes, I'm like, I feel like these are different. But a lot of times they always have like a sugar cookie recipe, gingerbread cookie recipe, you know, these kinds of things. So some of them are more classic. But hopefully it's not the same. I know sometimes some companies will bring out the same one every year. And then I don't realize that I have two of them. But they don't go to waste. I give them to like my sister or somebody else. This is one of the companies that does that. Uh, Bake from Scratch. I love Bake from Scratch. I used to get their magazine from like the first year. It's amazing stuff. They have great recipes. It's a lot of baking. <laughs> um, but then every year they put out a um, like a yearbook basically. So all the recipes they did that year, volume one, volume two, volume three. I'm thinking they're at volume six or seven possibly now. So I have. I just said forget it. Like I don't need this delivered every month or two. I'll just buy the yearbook at the end of the year, and that's what I do. So hopefully the company is still going to be around because I know obviously they want this in circulation but they have such great recipes and again I don't know if this one's new for this year so I was trying to look at that I was trying to see my receipts like you know the emailed receipts if I've bought this before because I do like these kind of books I love them and I'm this is my guilty pleasure buying you know holiday uh cookie kind of things and I was looking at like I don't remember some of these things or a lot of them so I don't think it's exactly the same as the years before but I do remember this one so you know I don't know if there's just a different collection of um, recipes or not but classic shortbread of course yeah we'll see love it that's okay and then delish Christmas baking again we have brownies this one looks like it has some uh, delicious uh, buttercream or some kind of frosting. Now, this looks super familiar to me. I'm like, jelly donuts. But I think what happened is I saw this at my grocery store and I thought, well, I know I'm going to go Barnes and Noble and I didn't want to pay full price because I have the Barnes and Noble discount, which, by the way, expired last month, so I didn't get the discount anyway. <laughs> but I did get points, you know, for next time. Sorry, I have a $20 reward, so I'm like, all right, fine. But, uh... Yeah, I think that's what happened. I, I was like, did I have this? No. I think that's what happened. I had seen it at the grocery store along with this one. And I was like, no, no, no. I'll go and get it somewhere, you know, where else. So, of course, Joanna, she's all over the place. Now we have, you know, she has her magazine. I've never purchased one of them or looked at them before. But I love this kind of thing. So I always go through and read the recipes. And to me, if it seems like, oh, that's actually well thought out. Or, yeah, that's about the same... Once you're baking and cooking for a long time, you kind of know if a recipe sounds good or like, eh, I don't know about that, you know, kind of thing. And so the recipe sounded great, so I went ahead and grabbed that. Cute. And then the witch's cookbook. <laughs> the recipes in here are crazy, obviously very... Just some different stuff. And I was like, you know what? Why not? Look at this juicy sweet caramel apple. They colored it with black um, food coloring. You know, Mrs. Cole Turner's apple pie. It looked really yummy. It sounds about right. So there we go. Brownie pig out. Hilda's almond cookies. Again, just look at the proportions and what's in here. It sounds about right. And the instructions sounded good. So I grabbed that. Um, okay, let me open the box from Lauren and I'll be right back. It has like a strap on it. For some reason I was like, oh, is it heavy? But no, it just, for some reason, they put one of these weird straps, which is fine. Keeping things together, that's good. Let me get in here. Oh, 
So Loran Oils has been around forever. Even when I used to like making hard candy 20 years ago, 25 years ago, whatever it was, um, they were already around. So they are from um, Lansing, Michigan. That's another thing I love about them. I just paused because there's a lot of stuffing in here and I want to get that out of the way. So I have a, uh, not digital, I have a, thermo a candy thermometer. <laughs> um, that I've had forever and it works great but I would love for it to have something like this where if you set it to tell you when it's a hard crack stage or whatever it'll beep and I'm like that's awesome so you don't have to kiss like babysit it and then kind of am I looking at it right if I look at it from down here it's, it looks like it's at 305 but I look at it from up here it looks like it's at 300 you know that kind of thing so um got that digital thermometer and then these are the things so to me these are the flavorings I was looking for the bakery emulsions are a little bit different but cotton candy fruit punch uh, flavors in these larger bottles. They usually sell them. I'll show you what they usually sell them as in little drams. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them at, you know, Michael's and uh, I'm assuming Hobby Lobby, all these places. Watermelon, bubblegum flavor. All my favorite flavors. Um, some of these were more expensive than others, so the size of the bottle might be smaller. So you have cherry. And then I, like this one's called cake batter. I just want to try that one since it's kind of a different flavoring. Butter rum. Cinnamon. Hot cinnamon costs like quite a bit more than these guys and I was like Ooh, okay a little bit of an ouch on that one and then this guy and I don't know I've ordered from them like years and years and years ago and I ordered the same thing the ultimate candy kit it's just like over 30 bucks uh, if you're new to them when you log on to their site they're gonna ask you you know if you want a coupon and of course so I got the 15% off or whatever it was so I was like might as well just get this guy um, they have a lot of kits, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll control myself. I only got those flavorings, that's why I logged on. And then the candy store moment, I thought, why not? And then they still have this, like I said, they sell it relatively inexpensively, so it's a really nice little kit. Let me open this up, I'll be right back. Sorry about all the noise, guys. So it tells you on there, Lauren Oils, out of Lansing, Michigan, everything that's in here. Super, just, I love this. I love this whole thing. So like I said, I have this already. Obviously these guys are gone because I bought it long, long ago, but it comes with candy, um, or the um, lollipop sticks, sorry. And it comes with little baggies and it comes with twist ties. I think it's a hundred, maybe. Um, all the molds. So again, whenever I make like the candy apples, I've been making the leftover candy, I just pour it out onto parchment, let it cool just a little bit, kind of score it with a knife in a fun way. And then after it's completely cooled, you just drop it and it breaks apart. But you can also take that same thing and pour it on here and now you have these cool diamond kind of looking candies or yeah, like the top. So we have that one and then it has this one. Use two oiled molds for each hard candy mix. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like, what? It, they sell hard candy mix, which I wouldn't buy. I just make my own with sugar and water and corn syrup. But uh, there's, I think it's probably something that's more shelf stable. Uh, when I make mine, you can get humid and it can get sticky and all these kinds of things. So it's a little bit different, right? You want to eat it kind of within a few days. So, um, but actually that's not true. With the hard candy like this, I do coat it in powdered sugar afterwards and it keeps for a long time. Like right now, I've had some for a couple weeks and we're eating it still. Uh, but on a candy apple, right? It's a little bit different. So they have their own hard candy suspension or type of powder mix that you can use, I don't know. So what they're saying is that if you make that mix, you're gonna need two molds, like one and then the other one. So we have that. The cute little like sunflower. I have like I say these same molds. Um, sunflower, and then this is for the little uh, teddy bear which I used the other day. You guys hopefully saw on Instagram or maybe on the YouTube short. The heart, which is lovely. My only thing is they're not very deep. I wish they were a little bit deeper. Uh, my friend used to sell hard candy lollipops. Like his parents, I don't know. They had a little store, and they would. He would make them and then he'd bring them and sell them for like a quarter every year or whatever. And they were just like so good and they were like thick, like this, you know, and it was just a circle. Just a circle, plain circle, super thick, so delicious. They use the same flavorings. And now I'm thinking about it, I bet you anything one was like cake batter. Because it was something about one of the flavorings that I've never tasted anywhere else and it's so good. And now I'm like, you know, I think that might be it. We'll see. It'll be a little bit of nostalgia. Um, especially because that friend actually has passed away. Um, oh my gosh. Maybe 15 years ago now? Maybe more. And so it'll be nice to remember Ben. But um, we have this circle lollipop here. And then here we have some colorings for our um, candies. We have red, green, and yellow. 
So of course you can mix these. And it's your primary colors. And that's a lot. And this is a generous amount because you don't need that much. And then it comes with all of these flavorings, you guys. So we have root beer, peppermint oil, grape, lemon oil, cherry flavor, and cinnamon oil. And so again, cinnamon oil is one of the more expensive ones. I believe the lemon is also maybe the peppermint. Um, and it just says natural, natural. I think that's part of the reason. But it's just this flavor. But anyway, uh, just some classics and then some fun ones, you know. Uh, basically the peppermint oil so you can have like a minty candy um, obviously root beer is more of a fun one cherry and grape so and it says these are the more popular flavors which is interesting because to me the flavors are these fun ones like what I picked up so anyway that's a nice kit uh, fun way to get into it and of course you're gonna supply your own sugar whatever it might have a recipe on here yeah it does say recipes um, and their recipes are tried and true. It's the same one I've been using for 20 some odd years. <laughs> I know I've been playing with the candy apples and trying different ones, but like their recipe worked really well for the candy apples. And they have their own candy apple recipe that's a little bit different from the hard candy one, but it's basically the same stuff, guys. Um, if you have a recipe that you like, you can dip an apple in it, you know, or you can just spread it out or you can make lollipops with it. Anyway, um, yes, and I heard from a lot of you guys from that last video, yes, please do something or make a video on my car candy apples, so that's really sweet. Um, again, I'm not really experimenting because I've been making hard candy, like I know how to make hard candy, it's the same thing. Um, you're just dipping an apple in it, you know, and finding which one is more resistant to like humidity, so things like that. I will try and do that, it probably won't be before Halloween, but to me, it's apple season, you can make candy apples all... Like, all year, I don't care. <laughs> For me, they're so good. Now that I'm like getting back into them, I'm like, oh, I should make these more often. The kids are like super happy with it. Obviously, it's a little bit hard on the teeth, um, but if you coat it nice and thin, it's it just crunches. Like it's not like it wants to break your teeth. You know, it just crunches away. So, anyway. All right, guys, have a great day. Hopefully I'll see you later with an actual like tutorial tutorial. I have a lot of ideas in my mind, but I just have to get the time to get them going. So I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.